live by my last name. Styles, the name make them like me in the wild. Black tie fed, them ears is chopping. It is Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in to OSD Obsessive Sneaker Disorder. D Wells, along with the entire OSD crew, thanks for tuning in as you do each and every week. Man, we got a great show in store for you. Man, the Disorleys, yes, we know, you know, you want to rock with us each and every week. This is episode 32320. Man, we are still doing it. The original sneaker talk show as we continue to bring you the sneaker news. You like it. Raw, uncut, straight to the source. We don't pull any punches. We bear our souls for you because we know we like to walk good just like you. My name is D. Wells. Man, well, let's get right to it. Let's get the crew, the soul doctors and disorderlies. The countdown is on. If you didn't know, let's go straight to Houston because guess what? The man's in Houston right now, but he's certainly going to be making that move to the big Mansana, the big Apple, NYC, for the Sneaker Summit coming up real soon. The one and only Mr. Kodoma Sneaker Summit. Hey, what's up, D? What's up, Paper? What's up, all the obsessive sneaker disorderlies around the world? You know what's up? It's this weekend. We've been talking about it for a good 45 days here. The Source 360 New York City Sneaker Summit is going down Sunday yes. at LIU Brooklyn. Mm. So make sure you're in the building. We got Cool Bob Love there spinning an all-vinyl classic hip-hop set. Mm -hmm. You definitely want to be in the building for that. We also have uh, Tyree Dillahay of Sneds and Bob's Burgers. He's going to be in the building. We threw up a little something special on the Instagram today from him to kind of get your uh, feet wet with that. So, man, we got a lot of special things going on. It's going to be a unique celebration of hip hop and sneaker culture. So celebrating twenty five years of the Source magazine and I know they have several events going on all weekend long starting tomorrow. Yes sir. In the New York area. You want to check those out. Uh because it's definitely going down, man. They're trying to do something special for the culture. So try to get out there and support that. Um all details on Sneaker Summit can be found on sneakersummit.com. But you know what I'm here for, man. I'm ready to get it in. Obsessive sneaker disorder. I definitely have it. I've been burning the candle at both ends because of it. And I'm ready for this event on uh, Sunday, man. But for tonight, I'm here, to, I'm here to talk kick. So let's get it in. Absolutely. And go straight from Houston to the PDX. The one and only Jesse is in the building. What's up, sir? How you been? What's the you know good word? You know what time it is. Uh -oh. I, didn't do it all. I don't care about all this madness right now. It's football season. Uh, there he go. goes. Go Patriots. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's all you got to say? <laughs> all right. Everything's good out here in the PDX. We've still got some sunshine. Weather's still good. Uh, you know, hanging in there, doing what we do. But uh, glad to be here on the show. About to get it in. Absolutely. Obsessive sneaker disorder. I have it. I don't want to hear. I'm living it, and that's how it's going to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the one and only, the professor himself, Mr. Paper Chaser in the building. What's up, sir? Man. What is good? Stop, drinking that, uh, stop drinking that juice, man. Hey, man. Stop drinking that water. I'm, I'm doing iced tea tonight. Okay. All right. There you homemade, go. Homemade blend in, in, nice. in color changing cups. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, oh man. Welcome, soul doctors. Welcome our guest, Max. Welcome to the show, Max. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Glad you're on. This is episode number three hundred and twenty. That's correct. Episode number three hundred and twenty. If you are not familiar, get familiar with the OG Sneaker Talk Show. We are obsessive sneaker disorder. Um, as the Dome stated, Summit hits New York this weekend, Long Island University, on Sunday, September 21st, as part of the Source 360 25th Anniversary Series of Events. Hope to see you there. Some of us soul doctors from OSD will be in the building. Um, other distinguished guests' names were mentioned. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you guys there. Um, we got a little bit of uh, something different tonight that I'm looking forward to us sharing with um, 
our disorderlies around the world. We have our homie Max Just of Etonic in the building tonight. So those of you who are not familiar before a few months ago um, with the brand prior to seeing photos of the retros leaked, um, tonight's your night to get caught up. And we're going to do that here like only we know how to do. So we thank Max for coming on the show. And um, introduce yourself to the people, Max. Well, guys, uh, like Sean said, uh, I'm working with Etonic right now. Um, a lot of the stuff that I do has to do with uh, design and development. And uh, we're really looking to see if we can push uh, Etonic and, and get people excited about the resurgence of this classic American brand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's start with your story, Max. you got a pretty interesting story to share with the people as far as your journey and where you are right now. Talk a little bit about that. Where did your love for sneakers begin, and how did it lead you here? Well, uh, it's, it's a, I have to say first and foremost that uh, it's really a blessing to be back here in New York City. Uh, I grew up in Queens. And for whatever reason, uh, you know, I had a really creative dad, and uh, some of that creativity rubbed off on me, and I ended up getting into shoes. Uh, and I like to take things apart and always learn, so I got to thank my mom for giving me that love of learning. So uh, I remember one day just taking apart my LA gears because I had to know what made the lights blink, and then that just started a whole other thing where uh, I just love to see different shoes and things that were not usual and mm. that just took me to design school it took me over uh, to meeting uh, Dwayne Edwards you know getting invited to pencil at MIT and then mm. led me back here to New York where I'm living my dream and I'm pursuing it so that's where I'm at right now. Great journey, great journey and you, you, met, you mentioned a key name there that being Dwayne Edwards, so we know you've been guided by, you know, the hand okay. of Obi-Wan, if you will. <laughs> okay. He's definitely a Jedi master. Yep, yep. So, um, how long would you say, or what would you say, rather, is the shoe where you realized you were going to stay connected to sneakers for a long time? Oh, man. I got to say that first aha moment was... Uh, getting ready for sixth grade and then going to buy shoes in the city with my pops and I looked at the shoe wall and I saw a pair of Gary Payton's, the first ones, the gloves with the zipper yep. and I just thought those were just super cool and just, just very different because at the time I was always into reading and finding out how things worked again and, and then just when I saw that uh, in the 90s it was such a creative era for shoes to where things were just kind of done to the left, and that was okay. So I kind of thrived on that, and I just ran with it. Nice, nice, nice. So, you know, fast forward a little bit. You're now at Etonic. Um, <laughs> how much did you know about the brand before you got there? Because um, the brand had disappeared for a while, and, you know, it's no mystery to anybody that they've been gone for a while, and now they're back. How much did you know? Um, before you worked at the brand? Well, I got to say, I learned a lot more um, when I sunk my feet into it because it wa Etonic wasn't, for my generation, it wasn't something that was so, um, like we weren't really familiar with it because we were getting bombarded with so many other brands. So a lot of people that are just a few years older than me you know, they tend to have such great fond memories about it, and, and we see it all the time, just that nostalgia of people that are just a few years older than me. But the great thing about Etonic is that uh, it gives you a chance to discover it, and once you kind of get into it, you see just how much heritage is in the brand, just how long the brand's been around, and then the whole archive of just great models that uh, Etonic has produced. Right, right. Now... What is the most interesting thing about Etonic that folks generally don't know? Well, Etonic is one of, if not the oldest uh, footwear brands. Uh, started off in 1876. 
out in uh, Brockton, Mass., and it was under the Charles Eaton Company, and then it got renamed into Etonic in 1976. So it's been around for quite some time. And and when you found that out, what was your reaction when you found out how far back the brand goes of the history of the brand? Ah, I, I thought it was I thought it was so cool just because uh, seeing these you know other brands and then understanding their story, but just seeing how Etonic was interwoven with our history, working with Arnold Palmer and uh, Jack Nicholas and Hakeem Olajuwon, Bill Rogers, it was just really great to discover those things and I want the consumer to discover those things too through our products. Right, right. Yeah. So just for clarification purposes because there are a lot of rumors floating around in different circles um, with a high level of what I'd like to say politely inaccuracy. Um, <laughs> clarify who brought Etonic back and, and who the principal partners are for this company? Uh, well, we've got a, a couple of partners. I'm not sure if I'm at liberty to really go into too much detail, but um, they, des they decided to purchase the company and bring it back, and we're running it uh, actually in New York City. So mm -hmm. I think uh, the whole East Coast should really get excited about that because it's an opportunity to have our own, you know, footwear brand back, you know, on the east side of things, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of chance for growth, and uh, I definitely want to see where this goes. Right now, the reason why I ask you that question is because Damon John from Fubu made it public a long time ago, and he actually, I believe, even mentioned on Shark Tank, um, him bringing the brand back. Okay. Yeah, he's, yeah, Damon's a part of it. Damon's, uh, you know, uh, whenever I'm, I'm at work, I tend to see him in and out. He's a very cool dude, very down to earth. Yeah, he's definitely part of the Etonic team and a uh, part of, again, the whole resurgence of the brand. Right, right. Now, for those who don't know who are watching the show, um, you're not familiar with who Damon John might be. He is one of the founding members of the iconic urban fashion brand FUBU, which, contrary to other belief, still exists. So, <laughs> we, we, while, while we're here talking, Max, I just want to clarify and educate people on some things, you know? So, pre appreciate you working with me on that. So, hey, no worries, man. So, how long has this relaunch been in the making? Um, well, I've been here for about a year, and I believe that um, there was some things going on, I think, a year or two before I got there. So I'm sure, yeah, I'd say about two years from my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's about the time we've been hearing, yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. So, D? Yeah, Max, uh, D. Wells here. Thanks again for joining us. As as the brand continues to to get the you know get the word out there, you know, yeah. there's certain models that, that that are touch tones, you know, that people remember because they either grew up with the brand, you know, they're they're or had a relative, a parent that was part of the brand. So share with me and, and, and the viewers who who decides on what models, you know, that that are going to be re relaunched, that are going to see the light of day. Um, a lot of those decisions, uh, they get passed through, really through a team. So a lot of that consists of insights from our CEO, our brand manager, um, our creative director, Willie Esco, and our head of sales. So we tend to come together in different meetings and figure out what's going to be the best thing to give to our consumers and at the best time. And at the end of the day, uh, the focus is to try to give them the best product. Okay. And, and you know, the first one out the box, it, w it seemed to have been a big one. A lot of people were really excited, you know, really, really, you know, just, you know, hype. And not hype as in the hype beast, but more so hype because they were excited about the, and that was the dream, you know, the, you know, the, the you know, Akeem sneaker, you know. Yeah. so. Was was the dream actually involved in the relaunch and, and re-releasing those? Well, if you um 
if you ever take a look at our website, etonic.com, or mm -hmm. if you follow um, one of our partners, Sneaker Beast, for, uh, for updates, you'll see that, uh, yeah, Hakeem Olajuwon is part of it, and he's also uh, working, we're also working with him on Brand Dream. And uh, mm. Dwayne Edwards is also a part of that, so that's very exciting, and that's something that we look forward to uh, down the line to being a real, you know, big, big move uh, for the brand. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And as you know, as the brand continues to grow, I mean, we 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 know the Trans Am is one of the big ones that's uh, coming up for a release, as well as the Stable Base OG, you know, which again mm -hmm. is a classic running sneaker. Um, are there some new, you know, some new sneakers in, you know, kind of in the quiver, you know, that you, you know, that we're gonna see at some point, maybe not 2014, but 2015? Well, right now, um, we're pushing uh, the lifestyle category, so there's gonna be uh, some really cool collaborations and some really, uh, you know, great new color ups of the classic styles. But uh, Etonic did a lot of was in a lot of different categories. So there is going to be golf. There is mm. going to be performance running. There is going to be uh, some basketball. You know, there's, there's going to be a lot of new things, but I think we definitely want to cater to those OG sneakerheads that fell in love with the brand. All right, Max. So I'm going to go some of those I'm going to go right out there right now. Tell me that Etonic is going to bring back the old school bowling shoes. <laughs> Tell me, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. 1979 in Puerto Rico, I was wearing Etonic bowling shoes. I'm you feeling that? So, yeah, come on, bring them back, bring them back. I, I'm, I'm gonna yeah, take a note of that. I'm gonna bring that okay. up. Okay. I'll see Etonic bowling shoes. They were, they were the shit. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. I was on the, I was on the military base with pops and the fam, so that's yeah. what I wore. But you yeah. feeling those? Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So you talked about the lifestyle stuff, though. You know, jumping back in, and you talk about yeah. the, you know, the, the the collaborations and stuff like that. Are we going to see some more collaborations uh, this year or early 2015? And if so, who can we can you let us know who they're going to be? What, what we're going to see? I see, I feel like you're excited, so I I want I want you to still be excited. I want to keep that excitement from you. Uh, so I can't I can't let too much. You're such a good marketer. You're very but, good. You're very good. <laughs> but but I can't say we are definitely working with some big name retailers. Okay. And some that are very recognizable. And I'm sure if you're a fan of the brand, you're gonna love the product that we bring out. Okay. I, well, uh, I. I personally want to split hairs and say, please bring back the stable air OG. See, D mentioned <laughs> the stable base. Yes. Uh -huh. Please, the stable air OG is is the joint. Tell me that's yeah. on the docket. Tell me that's on the, the red one that always gets previewed. Mm. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> um, there's so many. There's so many uh, shoes that start off with stable air. So. I think the one that you might be referring to, it might be the Stable Light. Yes, yes, it, that is the one, the Stable, yeah, so, the, the yeah. stable Light, yep. Okay, okay. Yep, that, one is, um, that one is so mean. Yeah, you feeling that one? Absolutely. It takes the... right now, right? It, it you know what's actually the, happening? <laughs> we're, we're mentioning models from Etana's catalog. There's nobody else probably or very few on the internet who know what the hell we're talking about we're right talking now. But exactly. see, but, but, there might but, be some but, people on this call who have no idea what you're talking about. I was going to say, that could be a good thing. If they're paying attention, Google is blowing up right now. Well, mm. they got the they got the internet. They can learn, you know. They they That's can right. they can go through that process That's of discovering, right. you know. As as a matter of fact, I'm gonna share my screen with you. Hold on, I'm gonna turn that screen share on because I want you to see exactly the one I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> see if we can get this up there and share it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Max, Max, when you see Steve, just click on his screen and it'll 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 feature front and center. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, stable light. Yeah. Well, okay. That's the one. Okay. I, I, I will put work in in that shoe. <laughs> All right, that's noted. All right. That's Love. what's up. Yeah, I like that one myself too. Nice, nice. Man, so see, we we know we know our thing about Etonic and the brand. You know, I mean, yeah. we're Etonic consumers. You know, I mean. 
that's what we do. We like sneakers, and we know a lot about sneakers. Go figure. So that's the that was the stable stable light. Okay. Yeah. See the stable Man. base and the stable light. What's funny is the stable base by name sounds like it would be more robust, but the stable mm. air the stable air light has a, a longer heel counter. And, and little last uh, some 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 geeky running features that I can go <laughs> in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Over there? You see him over there? Yeah, yeah. I started, I started, I, I, I'm sorry, I blacked out a little Max, bit. Did you see what just happened over there? Did you see that? He was into it. He was yeah. he, he was feeling it. <laughs> Who else yeah. you gonna talk to on the internet that can talk to you about your tonic shoes like that? Hey man, I love the enthusiasm. So, so Max, I see some some when you, some shoes on your Instagram here, and it's got a, a date on it, eight twenty four fourteen. Are these in the marketplace right now? Uh, which ones are you looking at? Is that the Trans Am? Wade running. I don't know what the yeah Trans Am. Oh yeah, the Trans Am. Yeah, those are those are uh, those are gonna come up pretty soon. Uh, we're working on those. That was the proposed date, and then um, as you may know, uh, whenever you're launching something or relaunching something. We come into a nice little friend called Murphy's Law sometimes, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, so. called customs, I understand. <laughs> no, but yeah, those those are coming out soon, very soon. Okay, I wear a size 9, just, just saying. <laughs> Get out of here with your sample size, little foot, man. Oh, man. So, so, so Max, these, for example... These ah, sneakers they call them, yeah, the Street Fighters. These just got previewed <laughs> earlier today. I mean, what's what's the story behind them? Because there's a there's a lot of bad information on the internet, and you know, one thing about OSD, we're not about just taking information and regurgitating it. We want to yeah. do our research and make sure it's right. So, so tell tell me the history behind the Street Fighter shoe. Well, the Street Fighter was a classic running silhouette uh, from the 70s. Really great shoe. And, uh, you know, it's got some suede and it's got that nice mesh and it's a great feel. And now it's part of our lifestyle category. Uh, back then, you know, it was very innovative. And then from that, we have some other styles like the KM 530 that are essentially the same thing, but they, they draw off that shoe. So mm -hmm. if you look back at Etonic's past, you had a full KM series, and that, that would just go off. So this was the shoe that pretty much started it off. It's a classic. Okay. Are we yeah. going to be seeing this in, in other colorways? I mean, classic silhouette. I mean, are we going to see the, um, like, black and red, you know, or are we going to see other materials on this particular sneaker? Um, we've, got a, we've got a few options. Initially, uh, it was uh, suede. Okay. With uh, with a mesh combo, but um, we're we're gonna have to see kind of you know what the market wants. You know, I I think that's that's part of it as well, right. because um, you know, it's it's really what what the market wants at the time. Um, when it comes to some of those decisions, I'm hearing a lot about um, obviously you have to prepare for the market, but I'm wondering, do you guys have some sort of initial line plan that you're like, okay, these three models we're going with, this is the colors we're going with, we're going to put this out there and see, you know, let's get this on foot, let's have people talk about it. Is that part of your line planning? Do you have oh, those yeah. models already? or No, definitely, definitely. It's Yeah, like we have um, we have our plan throughout, you know, this year and the next and, and so on and so forth. I think um, we're still trying to get a feel, you know. We still want we want to make the biggest impact, but we also understand uh, some of the challenges. That KM is nice. That Street Fighter is really, really good. Yeah, so, I I like I like that one myself as well. Well, and I, I anticipate that that one in a. In the marketplace, as as we see it now, obviously the classic, the Trans Am, that that's gonna make a big impact. But what I like about uh, the Street Fighter is that minimalist look that is very mm -hmm. very popular with young professionals now. That's gonna go. Yeah, that's definitely. gonna go a long way. Definitely, especially when I'm in the city, I, I usually see uh, the guys with the cuffed up jeans. 
and they have they love these classic running silhouettes, and I think Absolutely. those people will love Etonic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. That's what we're seeing. So, so what's Max, the two to five year plan, Max? Um, just like with anyone, with any with any company, you know, we wanna we wanna be the best. We wanna go out there and compete. So uh, right now, you know, it's just really getting um, a lot of these great silhouettes out, and then coming out with some new styles and the new, you know, technology and making stable air, you know, uh, a household item again, and uh, moving forward with some new creative and innovative products. Yeah, I'll I'll ask the question in a in a slightly different way, um, from the perspective of not so much competition, but um, that sort of being in your lane, um, knowing where you fit. Um, who do you see as your running mates? You know, birds of a feather flocking. Uh, if you were to compare Etonic in its new iteration going forward, um, you can't be all things to all people. Uh, who who would be in your clique if this was uh, this was the high school lunch table? Who who you chilling with? Well, I, I mean, this is a competitive market, so oh, I can't course. really. So I'll have you answer that question for me. Who do you oh, looking I'm... at Etonic and from what you do? Because <laughs> I glad, think that, that I'm, might I'm, just be I'm the glad, best thing right there. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> I don't know. That that sounds like things Sean tells us not to talk about on the show. Because <laughs> <laughs> you that information for free. It sounds like a CTC question. <laughs> that's, a, that's a CTC coming back at me? Okay. It sounds like a CTC question or or, or a STS question. Okay. Okay. The, you know what the, STS the, is? the doctors have spoken. I must I must I must hold the tongue. But uh <laughs> but but the reason I ask that is this. You're right, it's all competitive. That's business. That's how it goes. That's capitalist market. But the truth is, when I when I do branding for a client, when I ask a client to tell me about themselves, the last thing I ask them to do is tell me how they're different. Because the more real question, the more real answer would be that self-effacing answer to tell me, how are you the same? Who are you running with? That's like saying we're, we're all competing for talk time on this show, but, but these, this is my crew. I, I can identify who I run with by that like-minded group. Um, now, eventually, we all have differences that set us apart, of course, but everybody's going to give you the exact same answer. That's why I asked that question to see if there was, like Jesse said, what's the plan? You know, I asked that question to see what's the actual mentality going forward for a brand reemerging because wanting to be the best is the default. That's like saying all athletes sweat, but what sets you apart after that? We're all working hard. So that's why I often ask that question of a brand is tell me how you're the same as someone. That'll often highlight your differences and put you squarely in a lane and in a mindset that, that will get people attracted to you. You know, because you are, it is a classic brand. It is a heritage vintage brand. It's not going to, to be in the same lane as, uh, you know, LeBron what does, you know? <laughs> well, I don't know. Did you see those? Did you like those? Did yeah, you go for those? Are, oh, no, no, no. I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Okay. Okay. I'll just, hey, I'm just checking. No, sir. <laughs> no, um, here's, here's a good question to tie into what Steve is saying. Um, Max, the without you saying too much, of course, is the project that you're working on, either with your collaborative efforts or even the shoes that are coming out, you know, from Dwayne, are those putting you in a space where you guys feel like you can have the big piece of chicken on your plate for a while? Well, I definitely know that there's a place for Etonic. So the amount of space that we occupy up, I think that just is going to come down to multiple factors. But I, I, I'm confident that there's a nice, there's a nice spot for Etonic to make some moves and, again, uh, give our consumers some great product. Well, you know, in order to get your spot on the wall, you're going to have to go in and talk to the you – know, 
Why should I put you on my wall? Kind of like Steve said, what lane are you in? Where do you want me to put you on the wall, and are you going to move? So when I asked about plan, um, like you said yourself and I said myself, there's a lot of history of this brand that I don't even know. But, yeah, I'm looking at him as a sneakerhead like, word, this could work. I can get down yeah. with this. Oh, I like I, to be different. I, know, I like the materials. I, like there's stories that are already in the shoes. Man. Um, but where, you know, like <laughs> he said with that five-year plan, do you guys say, okay, we hit them like this with the retros, then we bring in some technology of what we already have, then this is what we possibly could introduce. The crew told me I should say. I, the, I know who you bang with. I, I know does, who you Does the plan with. have those kind of things in it? I know where I would put you. The crew said I can't say, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, well, definitely. Um, yeah, like I said, again, we are bringing out some of these classic uh, lifestyle lifestyle models, these classic Russia ones. Like, you love the stable lights, so I know that there's a time Absolutely. when those stable lights will come back out, as Absolutely. well as some other classics, you know, the Quasar. Mm. Uh, oh, like, now, mm. now you're talking. Yeah, yeah, now you tossed out a name right there. I teased your interest a little bit. That's yeah, so, so the, yeah, so once those things kind of get in there, it's gonna set everything else up, and it'll move nicely. So look, look for Tonic to be around for a while. All right, heard that. All right, lovely, lovely. If it is, if it ain't, we gonna tell you. <laughs> hey, like I said. Hey, know. hey, Mac, 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 it's ain't Max first rodeo with OSD. He knows how we do it. Man. Oh yeah, I, you know, you know, if, if them stable lights somehow find a way over here, they they feed on the table during the meeting status, you know. And, well, and well, I'll still be I, here. I'll still be here when you want to give me your sizes. <laughs> here's, here's something I want to ask in regard to the issue of you know fighting for your space and and you know right out the gate. Um, how hard was it? Um, I would say positioning wise. I guess this is you know, I guess it would be more of a sales question as opposed to what you do daily. But I'm sure you have a little bit of knowledge about the struggle. I assume. How hard was it to come out with the dream shoe at the time you did when we were in a current climate where all the other non Nike and Adidas brands were dropping retro basketball shoes? Well, uh, the dreams dropped on the first of August, and it was it was actually right in between a couple of really big drops for some from some other brands. Yep. Um, the new balance you know, James Worthy was one of them. Okay, I mean, I mean that's cool and everything. I, maybe because uh, from my perspective, I'm just so in it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I I was aware of it, but I wasn't really like you know. Jump in and get a pair of James Worthy's. Um, all respect due to James Worthy. He's a great player. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge uh, back to school time too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely. High, highly competitive from every every angle, every gen genre. Everybody's going to try to cash in on that. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what it looked like. But I, I think we're we're confident enough to be okay with that. You know, I think. Um, Sometimes if you're looking at the water and you're picking the best time to go, sometimes you forget that it's you're going to have to get in there and swim. So I, I was okay with that because mm -hmm. I think the biggest part uh, of a relaunch is just getting there. And sometimes you, you never if, – if you ever, you know, launch a brand or you're ever doing something again, it, it's, a, it's a really special thing. And you kind of just have to go at it, you know, and, and mm -hmm. be aggressive and – and get through that. Get through those first few seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the Wait, Did anybody get a pair of Akeems? Um, I don't have a pair yet. Hint, hint. <laughs> don't let her, this dude. That dude right there. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have a pair of these? Oh, he didn't pull the Jesse. You, you, don't have, you don't have these? Yeah, I don't have those. Mm. Not yet, Sean. Not yet. But I, I didn't forget about you. Now here's here's my question to you, um, and I guess this is um, in a in a personal personal journey aspect, because um, you've kind of you've went from um, your journey with you know learning 
the ropes and learning design and you've jumped right into probably one of the hardest challenges there is in the business is instead of working for a brand that's thriving and popping and constantly turning out SKUs and has retail relationships of all kinds, you jumped into working for a brand that has to completely and totally reestablish itself. So what have you been learning along the way with that? Well, um, just to, to piggyback on what you were saying, um, well, I went to design school and uh, I was working at the time and, you know, I was, I was not in footwear right away. And um, I took the initiative, and I learned how to make shoes by hand. I worked with uh, he became my mentor. I, I worked uh, with a, a gentleman from another country, and taught me how to make old school, traditional shoes by hand. And then from there, I took a trip on my vacation, and I went to Oregon, and I visited some different companies: uh, Nike Campus, Adidas, some other smaller companies, and I met up with Dwayne. And I think it was just at that point, I have no problem going after challenges. I think um, challenges, whether you win or fail in some aspect, they make you tougher and you should go not necessarily for what might seem easy, but what's going to make you a better designer, what's going to make you uh, just a better person, what's going to just help you grow. Uh, and you know the, the way you want to grow. So yeah, with, with that being said, I don't think anybody doesn't have challenges right now. But, uh, Paper, if you don't mind, that kind of leads me into a question that I wanted to ask. By all means, please. So you, you started from your background and, you know, what led you into where you are today. Can you take us through, like, a typical day or week or month of a designer like what 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 is your job like for the inspiring designer out there just give a little insight on you know what the typical work day or work week is like yeah good question um, <laughs> there isn't anything too typical about it um, but there's there's always um, new challenges and I think that's not necessarily part of just being a designer or a developer. Um, I think that also comes with the relaunching of the brand. But, um, you know, I, I go through my meetings, my Skype calls on a daily basis. Uh, I map out uh, the projects that I want to get done or get work, get forward, uh, move forward with uh, during the week. And uh, constantly having meetings and going through uh, different things with my brand manager and my creative director. And then, uh, for right now, it's just having to do a lot of corrections on samples and uh, communicating with factories. And then every now and then, I get to sketch and have some new concepts and then see where those can fit in. So that's always, like, the fun part. But a lot of it tends to be work. But uh, when you're doing what you love, you know, it's always a blessing. Nice, nice. Good answer. Um, also, an another piggyback off a of question, I guess. Now, you're working next to the esteemed and great Willie Esco, who <laughs> is quite a veteran in <laughs> urban fashion, and, like, you're sitting there with, like, a big gold nugget of knowledge about, you know, the industry right next to you, um, and especially with him being on the team with you, um, you, are, 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 are you absorbing some of that, being able to roll with these punches and deal with some of these pitfalls and issues with, you know, manufacturing and all that stuff that goes into it? Well, definitely. Uh, Willie Esco was part of the reason that I, I was able to, to be a part of Etonic, so I'm forever grateful uh, for him allowing me, you know, to, to take advantage of this opportunity. Um I tend to look to him for guidance. Uh, I trust him uh, for insight, and um, I have a lot of respect for him. You know, for giving me an opportunity. And at the end of the day, he's a really cool dude, very down to earth. And um, you know, I it's a pleasure working with him. Yep. Shout out to Willie. You better watch the show, Willie. <laughs> Who else got a question? 
somebody, anybody. <laughs> we can't let them off that easy. Come on. <laughs> I told me I couldn't say nothing. <laughs> that don't mean you ask a question. I did ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> I did ask. He said that like a kid. I, I did. Know, I, got, I got in trouble. Oh, I, man. I, guess I, I guess I have another question. Uh, what, uh, aside from everything, maybe already mentioned, what are some of the perks of uh, being a designer? Well, one of the biggest things is. Um, being able to take something that's intangible like an idea and then put that to paper and then if you're in the right uh, if you're in the right environment you're able to turn that into a sample so being able to hold something that you thought of or maybe like you know sometimes when I go to sleep I'll, I'll work on a problem I'll try to figure it out and then I'll go to sleep work out the problem in my dream and then for you to have a sample however long it takes I think that's pretty cool in itself, you know. I think everyone would like to, you know, everyone likes to create something that you can use. It's 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 pretty cool. You're wearing you're wearing two hats right now, two two very particular hats in the product creation process of a developer and a designer. Therefore, you know that what you design and what you draw on paper in 2D can bring its challenges when it's going to 3D sampling, um, gluing, and all those kind of things at a factory. How has yes. being able to handle both of those hats um, kind of give you some insight on the process? Uh, as we like to make sure that our viewers educate them and know what's going on, can you talk about wearing those two hats and, and what that's been like for you? Oh, yeah, it's it's funny because nowadays it's very hard to, to say where design starts and where, like, development or engineering ends. Um, I think I was lucky because with uh, my bachelor's, I said in industrial design, but um, I wasn't really doing shoes. I had to turn my projects into shoe projects, but we're doing all these things, and at the end of the day, it's just focusing on solving problems. So... That's just really the main thing with the job is to be able to not just be creative, not just to express your ideas, but also to be able to solve problems even when they come at the most unexpected times. That's probably when you need to be solving problems the most. So I think the best thing is to be able to focus on bringing solutions, pointing out problems, but also bringing in multiple solutions to that problem. If you can do that, you can go very far. With that being said, what has been, if you can share with us, what has been, what has been the one problem you see with a tonic that you are working on solving to bring the brand back? Um, I think the main thing that I would want to do is just um, help people understand why tonic is such a great brand. Like you, you guys yourself, I'm sure you have your experience with it firsthand you know, back in the day, so you already have that connection to it. I think the big thing that I want to do is get people that are younger than myself, you know, the real, like the younger kids that uh, that love shoes to understand why Etonic is so important, you know, and, and why and where the value in Etonic is. And I think once they can get that, then it kind of switches because there's always going to be a tastemaker. There's always going to be someone that's brave enough to like what he likes and buy it off of that. So I think we just need to find more people that can understand why Etonic is so great. And then enjoy the products, enjoy the shoes, you know, that's and a, all the things that come with it. You just made, which ties right into the question I was getting ready to ask you, which yeah. is how are you guys deciding? What's the criteria upon which you guys are deciding who you're going to collaborate with? Well, we've met with um, some different uh, retailers, um, and part of that isn't necessarily something that I get to decide. It's more so um, my brand manager and my CEO and head of sales and, you know, that whole side of the team. Um, but I think we're just looking for retailers that really help push the brand forward. So someone like um, a Barney's or or some other retailers of that nature that tend to, to 
that can be parallel with the value that Etonic brings. So, so are we talking about on on a retail level, just stocking Etonic, or I'm talking because I'm talking about actually partnering with on like shoe collaborations. Uh, give me an example, a shoe collaboration right. like with who? Are you guys planning on collaborating with like you know an extra butter, let's say, or um, anyone along those lines? You know what are I'm saying? Are you looking like, to do boutiques? So you guys, I mean, when you say Barney's. That's not necessarily a hype. You understand know what I'm saying, Max? Like, who, what's sense? the criteria for partnering with those kind of retailers, the boutiques or anybody like that, if you guys are considering that, um, in light of the fact that a few of them probably don't even know who Etonic is? Well, I'm not, like you said, I'm not sure how much I can let out the bag, but definitely, yeah, we, those, we have uh, some boutiques and and some other uh, sneaker shops in mind, such as, you know, Extra Butter and, and some of the guys you named. So I don't want to lead you on too much, but definitely be excited uh, for some of those. Well, yeah, I don't, want, I don't want you to mention who. I just, want, I just want to know what the criteria was for picking whoever it is you picked, considering the brand has popped up back, you know, yeah. kind of out of nowhere. And, mm -hmm. like, uh... Because you're going to have to weed through. You guys are going to have to weed through folks who are going to act like they know exactly I'm what they're doing. I'm going to save him a little bit. He's a, he's a designer, not the salesman, right? Yeah. Is, it, is that somebody else's job? I mean, what? what you you letting them off the hook? Yeah, it is. I'm you a line here. Max, you just got free entry into Sunday's H, um, New York Sneaker Summit. So make sure oh, you're there. Oh, nice. Was that some Brooklyn? Okay. Yeah. All right. I have to make my way to Brooklyn again. You just got free <laughs> entry. Was it 12 to 6, Kadoma? Yeah, 12 to 7. 12 to 7. They put, put Max on the list since you saved him. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can ask him in person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that's funny. Who else has a question for me? It's down, it's down in the internet. People are scared or we've gotten too many answers already. I think we've covered so many good bases. That's why. That's why. You know? It's true. And, it, and then Steve wanting to let out marketing, yeah. branding, strategy, information. <laughs> Man. Yeah, he's throwing himself how in they, that. How they, go, how they go know? How they go know we do that if we don't say? True, true, true. <laughs> Max, I have a question for, for you. Um, from a from the perspective of, of going to school and pursuing, you know, asking all these questions, you asking your, you know, yourself these questions about your career path, your growth. What words of advice would you give to a uh, a young lady, a young man who maybe thinking this may be their career path that they want to go down? They want to get into the world of either footwear design or something in the footwear field because maybe they're not a designer. But they still want to work in the footwear, you know, world or field. Any any gems, tips of advice that you'd want to share? Well, um, I think to be successful at, at anything um, in life, uh, number one, you got to know, you know, where you want to be. So I think first and foremost, first and foremost, um, I would advise people to figure out where they want to be and where they see themselves. And once they can hold on to that picture, um, do everything in their power to get to that picture. And don't be surprised if resources come your way. Don't be surprised if, uh, you know, things just tend to work out for you if you just have the, the courage to go for it and follow through and, you know, don't take no or, or anything else for an answer. So be persistent and go after what you want. Thank you. Words yeah. of wisdom, one Thank to grow you. on. One to grow. So Max, we letting you off the hook now. We've 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 thrown all our jabs at you, and oh, uppercuts and everything, and you have them weaved very eloquently while you drop some really serious jewels for real. Seriously, thank you very much for that, man. Um, uh, no we you coming on. And, you know, because you're a pencil alum, you know you're like family, so um, <laughs> you know to deal with that. Um, no, no doubt, man. 
let, let leave, leave our viewers, leave our disorderlies around the world who are watching are going to watch later with, with a little gem, you know, that they can watch the show and get to the end and be like, all right, yeah, I'm checking for him, I'm checking for them. Uh, um, uh, be, be specific again, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all teary-eyed when you mentioned pencil. Thinking back <laughs> to all these memories. Looking at my pencil, pencil on my desk and stuff. <laughs> Um, drop drop a parting gem on them about you about Etonic. When people watch the end of this show and they hear the closing, what are they gonna do? Where are they gonna go right after they finish watching this interview? Oh, definitely go to etonic.com. Uh, check out sneakerbeast.com uh, continuously for all these uh, new updates and uh, just be ready. Definitely be ready. Thanks, Max. Appreciate it, homie. No problem, Sean. Take care, man. Max Jess from Etonic, y'all. Watch out. They coming back. Some of Ridiculous' yeah, yes. favorite shoes, some of Dee's favorite shoes. Yeah, some man. of the yeah. Video Freak's favorite shoes. Get my bowl on. Tell you, man. Some of Kadona's favorite shoes. Blue, blue suede. What was the runner's call? The, 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 the smooth toe? The blue suede? The KM uh, Street Fighter? Blue, blue suede with the white midsole. Uh, yeah, that's a street fighter. Yeah, like that was crazy here for a while, man. With the and then the fila, the filas came out with theirs, and then the crazy. overpass. Yeah, that was junior high school, man. Take it back. Thanks for joining us, video freak. What's up? How you been, man? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm straight. He's doing a happy dance. You see him over there? <laughs> he all fancy. Got Eddie Kadoma. What up? I might, I might be able to make it. I thought I wasn't going to be, but I will be able to make it someday. Oh, word, man. It'd be good to see you. I'm glad. Yeah. I got to yeah. come through and say what up. You've been a busy awesome. beaver, video freak. You know it. Try, I'm trying to stay busier, but you know. Busy ain't even the word. That's the hustle right there, boy. What? <laughs> I ain't messing with What'd his. You say? I ain't messing with his Agassiz no more. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so, how many pairs of sneakers have you bought since Made in America? Just as a point of reference. None. Not for me. I how many pairs shopping. have you bought? How many pairs have you bought? Period. Uh, bought my daughter with three pair, I think. See, he she still got problems. See, three pair. I got I got her a pair of those uh, fly knit chuckers that's on sale. See, see, three I, pairs. She wanted to, she wanted to design a a, a a Converse Chuck High, so we mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, bought her a pair of some fly knit runners from the outlet. See, that boy been copping. So she good. Me, I'm trying to stay good for myself though. It's it's bad. It gets bad here and there, like. Right now it's a little it's a it's I want those Bo Jackson with ninety ones. That's our finish line or whatever. I want those. Then Bo Jacksons with ninety ones? What are you talking about? What are those Bo Jacksons? Whatever, the trainer ninety ones or ninety something, I don't remember. You know she so you're talking about trainer ninety ones. They did yeah. come back now. Uh oh yeah, 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 yeah. The gray with I the yellow. I want those. Yep, gray with the I want those. I want uh Agassiz popped up for eighty bucks, so I might have to get another pair of those. Oh, That's too much. Stop it. Uh, I want another pair. Of, uh, <laughs> I, want, I want another pair of uh, Hirachi basketball. Stop uh, that too. And all those yeah. new balances that I sent D the other day. He said all those new balances that I sent D the other day. Like I, I sent D like four, like three pair, like in the last three weeks. Four pair. It's, it's, they got some 1,500 red joints was crazy. So, yeah, enough of my rambling. Where, where can we find your illustrious stylings these days? What's the site? Throw it out there. Oh, uh, yo, thank you. Yeah. yeah. The Stash, baby. The Stash.com. We just got, we on the, uh, on the Source Power 30 that just came out, I think, today. So that's Is it the stash or the stashed with ED. The, the stashed with ED. Gotcha. So we're number twenty six on that list this year. We just we just cracked our one year, so that's a good you know, that's a good spot to have after a year. Yep. 
And I'll be I'll be in Atlanta for SneakerCon this weekend doing another Ace of Customs. I've edited Ace of Customs four right now. We're gonna shoot five Saturday. So yeah. I wish Heat was on here right now because he was just telling us about this massive wave of sneaker events that are just just tsunami through Atlanta. For real? <laughs> you guys are going to be like the sixth sneaker event in the last three months or, or last two months. I, 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 hey, after the, the last one in New York, like it was baffling to me that it works the way it works. Because mm-hmm. you walk around and honestly, like keeping it a hundred, everybody in there is selling the same thing. Mm-hmm. Whatever that day, that Saturday is dropping, that's in there. Mm-hmm. And every kid thinks he's about to get off and, and have a come up. Mm-hmm. And you know, it just it's it's crazy. And then you gotta remember the shoe from the Saturday before is yeah, there. Say, yep, the, the shoe from the. <laughs> The shoe from the pre, like the the last month of Saturday, is like it's yeah. crazy. Hey, the shoe for the Saturday from the Saturday before is the VNDS. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's the eight. Exactly. That's the eight point eight. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, a, condition, a condition scale. Yeah, that's uh, that eight point eight. A VNDS, a VVNDS. Yep. Yeah. A yeah. DS. The the fifty Vs, the fifty Vs. VVVV. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> The shoe is uh eight point eight. Man, I I don't I don't get how like you, you know remember the conversation we had ridiculous on here about selling the shoes that's been worn. Mm-hmm. Like it's out of hand, man. Oh, it is. Uh, I think I think I know why that is, and I think we've said this on the show before. I mean, when we when we were buying shoes when we were younger, I mean shoes were a hundred bucks. I know about you, but I'm still young. I mean, shoes were a hundred bucks, <laughs> and hundred dollars is a lot of money. Yeah. But it's not two hundred, two twenty, no, two thirty. You know the, the and you got to think about it. If you're sixteen, seventeen, maybe even eighteen years old, think about how long it takes it could take to earn two hundred twenty, two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. You also got to put in there the person that's spending their rent and spending their car note money. Yeah, absolutely. Or they should be. Yeah, absolutely. Cell so phone right. money. Yep. Well, and you know, I'm, I don't have a problem with the fact that people are reselling or that someone else has worn the shoe. It also depends on the source. You know, I mean... It's like going to a mechanic or going to anybody else buying a used car. There've been you talk about a shoe. There've been people's asses on your couch. You know, there've been people's asses. No, no doubt, but, 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 but it's but it's out of hand right car. now. Man. Oh, no, you're, so, no, you are, you, you're correct. I'm, about I'm that. talking about like to me, it's like if you're gonna buy stuff, okay, buy it, but don't have it in your head like okay. I'm gonna go spend this rent money. And I'm gonna rock this tonight, no, right. and I'm gonna right. I'm rock it tomorrow, and I'm gonna sell it on Monday. Right, no, you're right about that. And I'm then, like, you know, the post that gets me, the post that gets me on Facebook is, or on Instagram is, oh, I'm trying to sell these ASAP right now. Dude, they you just go bought today. them yesterday. Yeah, they gotta yeah. go today. Yeah, yeah I need <laughs> this. I need the uh, willing, willing to part with them right now. Need exactly. to move them right like, now. You just did this yesterday, my guy. Like, I'm you, like, dude, and <laughs> and then you're reselling at twice the price when I just. Try them on in the store for regular price. Know your market. <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah, that's people like just we, like we talked about. That's young heads who don't know business either. Spreading they spreading they self thin for no reason. Yep, that's young heads who don't know business. Well, it's not even all just young heads. That's just people who don't know business. If you know actual real world business, I'm not talking sneakers. I'm talking yeah. real world business and margins and profit and how all of that works. Yo, you would actually be happy. With a thirty percent profit, not a three hundred percent profit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, it's tough. But there's one event where it often goes down properly and right, and that is Kadoma going down this Sunday. Man, it's going down this Sunday. LIU, yeah, but our debut event in New York City, Source Magazine. Yeah, they hired us to curate an event for their 25th anniversary of the magazine, so we are having 
a celebration of hip hop and sneaker culture. This is not an opportunity for you to come rip off some little kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is a celebration of hip hop and sneaker culture going down at LIU Brooklyn. We'll have Cool Bob Love in the house. He'll be spinning an exclusive all vinyl classic hip hop set. We've got uh, Sneds by Re coming out showcasing for the first time. Inglewood. Coast. And a few other surprises in the building I'm not at liberty to say right now. You'll have to check out our Instagram on Sunday or be in the building to find out. I'm going to come right out and tell y'all to have a slightly less fun time because I ain't going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even going to wish y'all have a good time. Y'all going to have a good time but not too good. I'm going to say that. That's that flyover state hate right there. Oh, <laughs> God, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, hey, that's low, a low blow, man. I was, I was, I was, that's on, a low blow, Jess. No, I was, I, was I was searching for my tickets. I was, I was booked. I'm cooked. I'm talking about. I'm making plans. Client was slow to pay. Messed up my flow. I gotta stay on budget. I'm angry. I'm angry. <laughs> that's why. That's why he was mad last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you see yeah. his IG? He was ice grilling everybody. I was angry yeah, about it, bro. Wild, yo. <laughs> I was angry about it, man. Because, <laughs> because yeah. that mess. You know, you when when you a freelance or an independent or you work for yourself, a solopreneur, call it what you want. Hey, I'm you got you got a schedule. Hey, hey bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah. I feel your pain. Man, I'm I'm good. I, I you know things are flowing, but one little hiccup, one little flying ointment to mess Man. up your schedule. Man. So let's talk. <laughs> let's talk about sneaker stocks. We didn't get to do that at the beginning of the show, but we'll come towards the end of the show tonight, and we'll talk about the results of today's stocks. Um, these are. You know, the 10 stocks that we in the OSD crew watch and we publish 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or later every day, every day as in Monday through Friday. Um, you can catch these um, alerts on Twitter, on Facebook and the OSD group, and on Google+. Plus. Um, so we're starting off today with Nike finishing at 81.51, up 31 cents per share. Um, Skechers finishing at $58.79 per share, down $4.86. Big dip for them. Took a hit today. Um, VF Corporation, Vanity Fair Corporation, parent company for Vans, North Face, Timberland, etc. Quite a few other brands underneath that VF Corp umbrella. They finished today the at $66.21 per share, down $0.13. Cents. Under Armour finished at $69.09 per share, up a buck 34. Decker's Outdoor parent company for Uggs, Teva, a couple of other brands finished at $96.84 per share. I'm going to say that again. Decker's Outdoor Corporation finished at $96.84 per share, down 38 cents per share on the day. Foot Locker Incorporated finished at $57.31 per share, down $0.67 cents per share. Adidas AG on the OTC market finished at $39.22 per share, up a buck oh three today. This is the first Wednesday in the month that Adidas has been up for us. Puma AG on the ETR market finished at 188 euros even, down $0.15. Cents. On the NASDAQ, eBay finished at $51.95 per share of $0.34. Cents. And rounding out the list is Finish Line Incorporated, also on the NASDAQ, finished at $31.52 per share, up one penny why, per why, share why on the day. So, so what? What's what? Why Puma so high? What they do? They're in Europe, dude. That's not that's a Euros, problem. homie. You know how that go. No, nah, that's even higher. That's that's what I'm saying. I don't think people quite understand the transfer, the exchange rate. What was that number again in euros, paper? One eighty-eight even, but they always float around that. <laughs> yeah, but that that's that's their parent company. That's not them. Wait, that's that's the parent what's... company is them. 
That's who's trading. Parent yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no separation. The parent company's them. Well, there's a lot of other brands that are under there instead of just Puma AG. Of course, but that's still the money hey, tree. <laughs> this is where the, this is where we getting people to put the money. So this is where it counts. Yeah, that's the money tree. You could you could be a silo, but you're still under the umbrella. So you know, again, that's one, all, you, all you guys have to do out there is forego one or two or less of these releases. Get some money together. Holler at the soul doctors here at Obsessive Sneaker Disorder if you don't know how to do it and you want to know how. And we will help you get some money invested in some of these companies somehow, some way. You can play this game. It is not a myth. It's not a pipe dream. Yeah, you might as well play it because they're playing it on you. Look at that graph, paper. Look at how, look at how from from the eighth where they were tightly bunched mm -hmm. through September through now where everything kind of dispersed. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to look at from a market what, standpoint. What is that? Is that like going back to school and there's a yeah. little bit of back to school. There's yeah, a little August, bit of uh, NFL, you know, sports. Yeah, sports. I mean, the, the summer is always kind of dead because you put everything out and everybody buy, but then you get to that's back to school, and then what are we looking at now? Just holiday now. What do you guys think about holiday? Speaking of that, how crucial is it to some of these retailers that we have a a, a decent holiday? I think it's crucial to all retailers. Crucial to everybody. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's the ultimate. Well, I mean, uh, in uh, in years past, it's been do or die for some of them. And for I'm brands saying, or for retailers, you mean? I'm talking about for retailers. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing mall stores spacing things out. Mm -hmm. this, this I'm talking was, about look. I'm talking about walls that used to be full of shoes. Are now being blanketed with T-shirts. I think that's. I think that has everything to do with a few different things. I don't think it's just strictly a a holiday versus non-holiday. I don't think it's a retailer. I, thing. I, I noticed what he said this week. But I think. I was... But I think it has more to do also with neighborhood, market, customer base. It, it, there's a there's a few subtle nuances to that where. You know, I've seen the same thing. There's there's malls closer to the inner city that don't get traffic. They're not getting product. They're spacing it out. There's there's some retailers that are all red tags. Whole damn wall is sales yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, so I think it has more to do with that demo or, or with the spacing and the nuances of demographic than it does just holiday because a lot of times, and this is coming from a marketing perspective. No, yeah. I'm not saying holiday. I'm saying that. Uh, stores are obviously not ordering in mm. the quantity that they were before. Yes, Tariq, you noticed the same thing. I think I think it depends on the. Uh, no, I was I was in uh in Cape Cod and I went into a finish line and like it was more it was less shoes on the wall and more like they had book bags up and hoodies and all that up on the wall more than. I've noticed in a long time. See, I that's, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying is we have to look at more than that. Here, we just opened a brand new house of hoops connected to a brand new Foot Locker. H&M opens tomorrow fully stocked. The finish line walls are not sales tagged. We are fully stocked. It has everything to do with your market. And I think, like Jesse joked about flyover states, I think there's a little bit of look at me going on with the coast and the south. They forget we doing just fine out here. But, uh, but are you riding the end of that wave? Dude, there is no wave. We, the recession didn't reach us here. That's I'll what I'm trying to say. I'm ready to say they getting the H&M. Things is about to be popping in Omaha. Yeah, <laughs> that's, we didn't, we the didn't, flyover the, is where you're getting your growth right now. Absolutely. Yep. So absolutely. That's why, you know, Kodoma, you say you go out and you see some of these other stores that, that may be ordering differently. I agree with you. I think that's true. I think they're realizing that, one, they can't pay their bills like that and they have to diversify whether it's apparel, whether it's uh, candles, whether it's having a little bit more diversity in their, in their stores as opposed to just a wall of sneakers because I don't think anybody wants to see that shit anymore. Um, so you are seeing some of that, but in terms of these bigs, nah, they're hitting middle America like you wouldn't believe, dude. Bruh. <laughs> they're hitting Bruh, middle you, America boy, factory hey, stores I'm, and these malls, you know, the Iowa, I'm glad, Louisiana, I'm glad I'm you don't hear about. I'm it's, glad I'm my own boss because I'll be at H&M tomorrow, bro. Let's get the down down there. And listen, <laughs> for all of you who've done the sneaker tour here in New York, 
there are still walls upon walls of sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. I, that's what I say. It, it, it's not a blanket statement that can be made because there's so many subtle nuances to it. Right, exactly. Um, there are still stores, you know, in the deep concentration areas all over here. A lot of you know where they are, who they are. There's still walls upon walls of sneakers. And what, they're what, always going to be able to do that in New York City in those spots, no question about it. But I think you're not going to see pop-up boutiques anymore. You're going to see something that's well, a little bit... Well, well here's the question, though. Is the stuff selling? And that's where the same as everybody else. No, it's not. Right. That's why. That's why you see it. That's why you saw, like Villa. Like they had all their Lebrons for what seventy dollars the other day. Did they? Yeah, the last Lebron. They had like the last, cause whatever they've been sitting on for seventy dollars. Well, well, you you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I think the era of the boutique running the game is done. Or, or waning, and, those... and and the tried and true that people like to clown the mall store, they're doing okay. All those depending last on, phone depending on area, yeah. On sale. yeah. There are there are certain there are certain boutiques that are running the game. There's no question about it. But I think that because when I say running the game, I mean when they're going when brands are going to say, hey, how do I fit in the marketplace? How do I do this? How do I do that? There are certain boutiques that they're that they're calling on to do that, which is how those boutiques are living. True. But, you know, like with, but like with anything, Jesse, you and you know this because you, you've seen the creative world from the inside out. You know all it takes is one boutique because all these companies are going to these boutiques asking that question. You're absolutely right. All it takes is one boutique to be full of shit and ruin that relationship or be wrong about their forecasting. When the mall stores and the soccer moms and the I need ball shoes for basketball practice this, release day that, these malls are getting the release shoes. At least out here they are. Yeah, but that's a different. But that's a different marketplace. No, well, not, not, not out here. Like what not out, not out here because we don't have boutiques. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm or, or I'm trying to illustrate for everyone. Name a shoe. I'd say maybe not some of your zero, your tier zeros. Okay. But name a name a shoe that's hard to get on the coast. I'll go get it for you tomorrow. <laughs> At the moment. Derek Jeter Quick Jordan. Strike? Quick strike. I'll go get it. Derek, Derek Jeter Jordan ones, please. Thanks. I'll, I'll head out to the mall and see. I, I guarantee <laughs> you. I guarantee you. I could probably scare up a few sizes. I guarantee <laughs> you that she will not be in Omaha. <laughs> Bruh. What that the blue? Like, you, know, no, no. you know. You know how I get about, the about this place. If you ain't yeah, been here, blue. shut the lip. Y'all right. don't know what we got out here. It well, ain't out yet, though, is it? <laughs> no, it comes out the twentieth. <laughs> It comes out the twenty. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to the mall and I, I, and 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 I'm gonna go ahead and spend some dollars that, for y'all. That, 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 that might. Me that, that spend might. Some dollars. Just take the Instagram. No, but, 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 but hey, but, hey, but, hey, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, hey, Steve. If it's yeah. like that, I'm gonna put my order in right this second. Bro, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to tell y'all. I'm I need, trying to tell y'all. y'all I need. Y'all, I need, y'all, I need y'all, infrared y'all, sixes, okay? Bro, so, y'all talking <laughs> infrared sixes? I can. I'm telling y'all. Y'all. I'm talking to y'all, man to man. Y'all know me. Y'all know I don't go in for the hype. I don't go in for the bullshit. But y- the coasts have this imperial mindset that things <laughs> are And it bugs the absolute shit out of me. No, no, no. no listen, listen, I'm going to tell you like this, Steve. Somebody's y'all, having their moment. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you. I don't, I don't I'm, take that. what you're saying, bro. I'll, I'll ride with you on some of it. But I'm not going to go with everything. Well, I'm not asking you to. If you think if you think I'm asking you to, then you oh, no, can lose no. the shit. Oh no no no! I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I. What you're saying, everything isn't gonna be in there still. It's not. Come see. Well, here's the thing. Here's Come the see. thing. How do you how do you know? I'm I'm, how just, do you know? I'm hey I'm stepping out on the wire. I'm just saying. I'm, 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 on, I'm on I'm on I'm going on the plank. I'm just I'm just all I'm, all I'm asking because is you how do you know, know? And everybody in this in this conversation knows. Everything isn't gonna make it to the middle of the map. It's I know, ain't none of y'all, I know, ain't none of y'all been here. How is it fact? For real, bro, fact to me, bro. Listen to me. This, this is. Uh, be careful, I'm gonna pull my card down. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my card down. Okay. Ninety nine to two thousand and nine. I lived in Iowa, bro. I went to no, Chicago. Hey, no, 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 no. It don't matter. He can't it say I don't matter. know nothing about it. 
But you got to struggle. You can't say you don't know nothing about it. I struggle. It's a different time. I struggle for everything I want. There is a good... There is a good... You do this every time. You said the same thing to me. And then you go to Chicago. The whistle. The whistle. Listen. For a year in... Mute him. Mute him. All right. All right. All right. All right. Hey, all right. Hey, we all have right. to say this, and, exactly. and we've admitted this on the show. We we gonna end this. We gonna end this one right here. <laughs> oh, man. Here's, here's what we've admitted. And here's what we are the only ones on on the internet are willing to say. Oh, this is easily one of the most interesting times in sneakers. We've said this since Absolutely. the whole Nike and Under Armour situations happened. And because of we are because we are where we are geographically placed and reporting in every week, we all have the different realities on where sneakers are and where they aren't. Oh, uh, no doubt. Has has Steve sent me pictures of stuff that there's nowhere in New York anymore? Yeah, he has. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I can't ride with everything with that wholeheartedly. He has. You know. Um, but the fact is. You know, and I do agree to the fact that yeah, boutiques are setting a barometer, but that ain't the only game in town anymore. And proof of that is Under Armour's number two in sales in the U.S. and they're not in boutiques. And I know, and I've said this last week, there are boutique owners who have called me and asked me what they can do to get an Under Armour account. It is a different game out here. Believe it. Believe that. <laughs> Stop ice curling, Steve. Yo, Steve is making it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Man. I'm done. I'm done. I'm through. What you do for, bro? I'm I said through, I man. can't ride with everything that you just said. I don't care if you ride with it. I don't want you to. I'm through. Because I know, I, and you know what? I would have to see that for myself. That you can just go and find everything. I don't. Uh, everything no. is a big word, I'm, bro. I'm just going to say this. It's a different era than it was in 99, oh, no, no. 2000. Yeah, there's a reason. I, I, there is I a very good. Just let me prove my point. There is a very good reason that stock number keeps going up. Mm -hmm. and True. They have found every nick and cranny to stuff shoes in, believe it or not. There is a house of hoops in Omaha. In early 2000s, you would have never imagined that. Wait, there's an H and M in Omaha. Open some that's more. Not, that's that's not unbelievable though. Yes, it is. I know it's their market. I, it I love that y'all think that I, is their market. They they heavy no, on the internet. No, they just got online. H and M just started selling clothes online less than a year ago. They heavy on the internet though. They just started though. The so little kid going. be seen it for that stuff out there. So we got some WTFs for tonight. Um, there's plenty of WTFs. We, we did we did have one, and I wanted Steve. I didn't think it's a WTF. Some folks went at me earlier today when I posted it on the <laughs> OSD blog. Oh, Je Jesse set this one up. This was an alley oop. So, so I was like, you know what? For for, for ninety eight thousand ninety nine cents. Put it, put it up, D. I think yeah. I, I, I'm, Dealing with the gremlins over here once again, but what nonetheless. Shoe is it? Find it. What shoe is it? No, no, I got it here. here I, go. I've been, I've been waiting. You got I've been, me. You got I've been me waiting to wondering. drop science on this it one is. too. I've been waiting to drop science on this one too. It is oh, the, the hundred dollar Air <laughs> Mag. The oh yes. Dollar, nine dollar hey. You know <laughs> they're available in back order yeah. on the you know Halloween costumes website. Yeah, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you I'm gonna I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let everybody say their piece before before I, I talk future. about this one. Hey, did, did you see? Mag. Oh yeah, this is dope. Did you see I my like post? This. Poor man mags, the unmags. Yeah, the unmags. Poor man Yo, mags. This is crazy. But this goes to show you like what you're spending on shoes right here. This is officially licensed product. Yep. Wait, they have how every. How is how is this the poor man mag? It's technically still an original. It's the real I mean, real it's ninety nine dollars. No, no, no. It's the no, real no, thing. Price. Forget price. All it's right, the real right. thing. It's a real mag. You know that Nike doesn't own the 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 shoe. Nike might own the name and their own swoosh, That's but right. that is a work in turn product. That was a work for hire. Universal right. owns that silhouette. That's that right. is a real shoe. That's right. It's a real mag. 
I'm telling you, last year with I all that hoopla, they didn't, didn't do that's this. That's a poor man mag. No, it's not a poor man's mag. It's all the right. real mag. All right. For $98.99, I would buy a pair of these and rock them and not give a... Hey, but how, how many think they're going to make, though? I got a question. I'm a little confused now. Uh-huh. What was in the movie? This. Was there a swoosh? Was there a swoosh in the movie? Yeah, there was a swoosh in the movie. you how this works. In the movie, there was a real swoosh. You're absolutely right. But that shoe did not exist anywhere but on screen, which means Universal hired Nike and Tinker to do a workup for their movie that was never to reach stores. The copyright on that silhouette is actually owned by the studio. It was yeah. licensed back to Nike as a promotion. So, that's so a yes, there was a real swoosh on it in the movie because who was going to pay attention to the shoe without a brand on it? That's like, you know, actors who drink their sodas like this. Mm -hmm. It was, it was hey, weird, but just, that uh, shoe I have a, I have a fun Back to the Future fact if you guys want to hear it. Yeah, of course we do. There's people around the world who want to hear it. But the Air Mag was actually designed for a scene that never got made where they were supposed to play a sport when he was wearing the Air Mags and actually walk on the walls and ceilings and stuff. That's why it's called a mag and has magnets in it. Uh, furthering, it, the, furthering the point that Universal was the creative director for the Mac. Yeah, but um, what I was going to say is that the Air Mags itself, if you look on the Almanac, remember the sports Almanac in the movie? Yep. There's no basketball in the Almanac. Basketball is gone. Mm -hmm. And you know what year the Almanac came out? The year the NBA went on strike. Was that 99? No, like 2012? Uh, 2012, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. so, the second time. That that's just a weird coincidence. That's a nice little tidbit, yeah. So Mom, some man. alternate universe out there, basketball became what, what, they, what they say in the intro on the, on the DJ Shadow Uncle album, Somewhere in Space. Hey, yeah, okay, an okay, listen. universe out there. Basketball became magball, and these are actually futuristic basketball shoes. Hmm. Hey, who? Yeah. Okay, now the question is, who's copping? I tried to. <laughs> I would buy a pair. I would definitely still, buy a pair. I'm still sticking by my statement there are the poor man mags, because if you have a pair of Nike Air Mags and those Air Mags side by side, and I tell you you can have one of them, you know which one you're taking. Like I've said, like I've said before, but I'm a they, spray they look on though. that bitch. And if you get that close to my feet, you getting kicked. Hey, the, <laughs> the details are different in them, though. Did you guys see the uh, Easter egg in the in the Nike commercial about the release date of the uh, of the next Air Mag, the Power Laces? No, they, when is it? When is the, it when they released the uh, Nike commercial. Saying that they were going to do the auction for the Air Mags, uh, Doc Brown went into the store and he asked if they power laced the shoes, right? And then the guy asked Tinker, and Tinker's like, no, not till 2015. So Doc got back in the car and he looks at the reader and, it, and he goes to the same date in 2015. So whatever date the Air Max came out on, on in 13, it's going to come out on the same day next year, most likely. Mm. Yeah. I'm so. copping my $100 version. I'm good on that. Yeah, you're good on that. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. I'm fashioning myself a hey, suit and spray painted it like the fly nets. <laughs> First of all, nobody will know. Wait, wait, wait. Did y'all see his eyebrows, though? Wait, wait. Did you see his eyebrows? First of all, <laughs> yes, just like that. Did see his eyebrows, though? Just like that. Hey, hey. 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 I'm about to, I'm about to, now you gotta get a screen print. You gotta get a screen printer. <laughs> you, can, yeah. you can peel the swoosh off one shoe and put it on there. Uh, uh I'm like, yeah, yeah, just like. 
First of all, these shoes should be costume shoes. They should not be worn out in the street for any other reason. So I'm glad they're Halloween costume shoes. There's no reason why anyone should be wearing these to try and style people. People, be, people are going to wear these. You know, come on, paper. You're going to get on the subway. You're going to get on the A or the C. Like by the end of October, <laughs> and you can look down, and you be like, "What?" Yeah, you you gonna go to Brooklyn Bowl and see somebody bowling in a pair? Yo, oh hell out. yeah! Tariq is absolutely right about the Brooklyn Bowl comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for a hundred bucks, that was a smart move on Universal's part. Yeah, absolutely. they might, they may not last long though. They're sold out they're right sold now. Out. They're back order. No, no, he sold uh, about quality wise because they haven't released yet. I don't What's think. That? I think they're on back order because they've never. Yeah, gone they're, they're gonna send. They're gonna send an email or or notify you somehow if you signed up for your size. Every pair is sold out from seven to fourteen on that site today. That just says sold out. They haven't released. There'd be hype beast bragging about their receipt. Yeah, see, <laughs> it's expected September thirtieth. So what you do is you click on your size and then they'll notify you. Boom. Oh yeah, I know. I'm on the list. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Oh yeah, your size." Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, he, he they got him in a 14. Can you squeeze into a 14? Do it. Look at that toe. You can do it. I don't uh, even want to. Use this. I don't see the whole thing with the mag. I, I ain't yo, never he, been yo, he. Hey, yo, he. No. You gonna let me in the club Friday, man? <laughs> when no. you coming down? I'll Just don't worry. It's gonna be my birthday too. I'll try to turn up for an hour and then go get in bed. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Turn up for an hour." <laughs> for a whole hour. For an hour, man. I'm trying to jump on some couches, get my get my uh whatever shoes dirty, and go to the room. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. To get whatever shoes dirty and go exactly. To the room. Right. So paper these these sneakers. Some people would say. An easy cop? Some will say easy, easy cop. cop. Easy I mean, cop. What do you mean easy cop? It's going to sell easy, out. Easy they they cop, are going to sell out. Yo, they got the whole outfit though, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you know. I was unable. I was unable. I don't think they called me. I was unable to get a pair. I don't know if it was because of the checkout mm. process to my job computer, but I was not able to get a pair of my size. So <laughs> I'm thinking they may have a limited amount per size. No. I, don't, I think it's what. what I think they're trying to gauge and see. Yeah, that's what they're I think, doing. I think you can build these shits in your living room. <laughs> oh, wow. I think they they they, they doing what uh what Steve said. They're going to gauge and see a little bit yep. and then make them. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, seriously, like like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hit them with a swoosh and I'm going to put them on a shelf in my office. Yeah, I'm having I'm going to have a pair of those just for display purposes. Hey, I'd rather have these than the fake ones. What, the fly steppers? Nah, just the ones <laughs> you can buy on the on the on the channel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fly steppers, Nike fly oh, steppers. Man. Yo, I think it's rocking them joints too. Like, they really are. Yo, but it's, yo, it's way too many. Yo, it's so many uh fakes though. Like. They uh they they been popping up at the shoe events, man. No What's no no, I'm talking Air about Max? I'm talking about the fly yeah. stuffers. The Air Max. Fake hmm. Air Max popping up at sneaker events, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got to like you gotta watch out, man. <laughs> you gotta watch out out here. Oh my god, that sounds like the opening act for the four for the four tops or something. <laughs> <laughs> We going to see the fly steppers, and then we going to see the temptations. <laughs> fly steppers, the Nike fly steppers. Woo. That's a horrible shoe. That's a terrible shoe. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to bring up another topic tonight. Not a WTF, but this one is more a LeBron's hairline. Well, <laughs> I, I did think that when I saw the press conference pictures. I'm not gonna lie. Wow. That all of a sudden that. he's got hair, but uh, that that's that's not hey, what I want. Hey, 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 that that hey, HGH do things to you, buddy. Yeah, the money can do that, man. Hey. Yeah, what, that money can do that. Money S can do that. SHC, cold hard cash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's not only the president. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to know is, 
Why is the NFL f finding football players for wearing soccer cleats on the football field? Really? They are? I didn't see that. Because, yes. because it's against the uniform policy. Yeah, well, you know... But it, how, how is there a difference that much to know, like, which is which? Well, they can tell by the color. Very my, different. Cousin, my cousin used to play... So this is the story. The uniform mm -hmm. policy in the NFL is ludicrous. My cousin used to play, and he would tell me stories all the time about even if you get tackled and your sock is down, like they're on you to get the sock back up, tucked underneath the pants. Like it's it's actually childish. Yep. No, so, they're just trying to keep it tight, man. But so uh, Anquan Bolden ditches his football cleats for soccer boots. For him. Uh huh. And he gets fine. And remember last year, some of y'all remember Brandon Marshall from my beloved Chicago Bears actually wore a pair of um, green hypervenom um, soccer boots. He got fined. Yep, he got uh, fined. Uh, basically heavy. promoting or you know trying to bring awareness to mental illness. Mm -hmm. He got hit with a fine for ten thousand dollars for wearing those. Ten Ooh. G's for wearing a green soccer. So the other night, you know, Bolden. Scroll down. Marshall. Yeah. Bolden Showed up, and then after all said and done, they actually exchanged jerseys similar to what's done on the soccer field on the pitch. I and like that. Took their jerseys like off that. and handed it to one another. I wonder if somebody put them up to that because that's smart. So that's very very smart. They exchanged they exchanged jerseys right there on the field. On too. the field. That's what's up. up. The that's NFL just this year is finally, I don't know who's been watching a lot of football lately, is allowing the brand of your cleats to actually show finally. Mm -hmm. For a very long time, your brand of your cleats was not allowed to be shown. Yeah. You know, you, they, you would have to tape them or whatever the case would be, which, you know, some people would say one way or another was quietly contributing to some of those injuries with all that damn tape over your shoes. But. This year, now they're finally allowing the brands of the cleats to be shown. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the NFL is under a lot of scrutiny. I mean, we know all the stuff going on with, with Rice and all these other players. But the big thing that's really happening to the to the game, it truly is becoming the no fun league. It truly yeah, is becoming it is. where we yeah. have these these glorified and 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 I, you know, we all know different athletes who play at the you know at the professional level. Um, it's becoming harder and harder for them. So they're taking, you know, there's so much administrative bullshit that the game is no longer fun. No, it's not. That's the, only, the only thing that is fun, the only thing that is fun is the game. All the other stuff around it, going to the arena, what your favorite player might be wearing or who they're sponsored by or what's cool about the NFL, none of that matters anymore. The only no. thing that's cool no. if you actually played the game is watching some good strategic football for that like hour or two hours as long as the game is. Other than that, you turn the TV off because the rest of it's. I know they, I know they, they, who is the who is the poster boy of the NFL right now? Who is the superstar? You Roger, know? Roger Goodell. No, yeah. but like <laughs> who is it? I I would it's I would I struggle. It's Drew Brees. He's straight laced. Drew Brees. Guy. I think it's, I think when it comes Drew to Drew Brees, he's on too. Like, Ooh, that, that you, you, then who is it, Kodoma? I love how y'all ask. I'm asking you. No. Like, who is the superstar? <laughs> who is the poster boy? Who is the LeBron James of the NFL right now? There is none. I was going to say that. I agree. The LeBron James of the I NFL. Agree. And there, never there is won. none. I agree. There is none. There, there, is there, no. there is none. There has not been one. And that's the reason why the league is as popular as it is. I mean, yep. the bottom line is everybody has people that they follow. Uh, the you league is the so? league, and, and, and the that's the reason why it's, it's popular as it is. The reason I, I answered the there. way I did was from a marketing perspective. You want to know who the poster boy is? Look uh -huh. at who has the advertising dollars. Oh, and two, I don't give a shit. Drew Brees has the commercials. Tom Brady has the commercials. I don't care how good you are. What about Megatron? Marketing hey, Peyton Manning. It's still, thank you. It's what about the Megatron? Peyton Manning, you Megatron is the man when it comes to talent. Stuff. He's the man Megatron when it comes is to not talent. marketable, bro. Exactly. Uh, you don't see you don't see their faces. I would I would I mean, say here's, here's a tricky Nike answer. Does, they spend a whole bunch of money, don't they? Here's let me, it don't let matter. Me, it still let happen. me just spit some names out there. You tell me if these guys were poster boys. Uh, Terrell Owens, Randy Moss, Emmett Smith, 
Tom no, Brady. No. Tom Brady. Brady was. Uh, Elon Manning. Peyton no. Manning. Peyton was. You don't they, think they 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 is. They getting they don't advertising think they, dollars? They each had their time. No. But this year, I don't see anyone. Look, when you say the word, when you say the word poster boy, it literally means what you say. The marketing face, not the talent, not the contract, not even the rings. The marketing face, the poster boy. Yeah. You can talk to you talk about it in a college sense. Okay, I just so, sent one of my kids down to Arkansas to run track for the Razorbacks. He's a 4.0 student. He happens to be a redheaded white boy that can triple jump out of the, out of the stadium. He's a poster boy. Whether he goes to the Olympics or not, they can take that 4.0 student to the press conference. He can speak eloquently and make them look good while the knucklehead might go win the national championship. The poster boy and the talent are not the same thing. Nope, they so are. Eli, so the, the Peyton brothers aren't killing it advertising wise. They are. They are. are. I, he was on my list as poster oh, boys, no. definitely. Wait, but, but that was why I was saying it's no one person because regionally everyone gets, mm -hmm. gets these commercials and marketed differently for all of us. Mm -hmm. All of us can sit down at a, and watch a football game on Sunday, and, and we have a different set of players push at us. That's, that's the reason it. why the NFL is success, as successful as it is. They don't yeah. have just one name. Yeah. Like LeBron, they don't have one or two names. They have, like like Pape just said, it's a regional. Down here, oh, I, see, come on. I see, no, listen, listen, listen. I see Matt Ryan. I see Matt Ryan down here way more than I see Drew Brees. Way more. And up here, you're going to see Eli. You're going to see up here is Green, Bay, is Green Bay, Chicago, Minnesota through the Midwest. Yeah, but but the top see. three, the top, you know what? Let's go by reason. The top three down here, uh, Matt Ryan, Peyton, and and to a to a smaller extent, Eli, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know who we also see a lot of, <laughs> believe it or not, Cam Newton. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yep. believe that. because it's, it's, it's where I am. You feel what I'm saying? It's it's all about where I am. Y'all yeah. probably don't see none of these people where you're from, but down here where I am, they market like that because the Falcons run shit, football run shit down here. Up so here? the bottom line is, it's all regional. And, so there's no the, no poster boy. There's and, several poster boys. And and to that to that point. Yeah. Right there, Leo. In the Midwest, we're team oriented. While we, while you know, until until his latest uh, legal battles, Adrian Peterson might be seen, but here they market whole teams. We might get a little bit of Aaron Rodgers, but it's Green Bay, it's Chicago. Chicago has some stars. They got some talent, but they're not marketable by face. I agree. I agree. So they, we so they see market Eli, the players themselves. We see Victor Cruz. Yeah, we don't. Well, I, I don't see Victor Cruz nowhere down here. Exactly. What? Yeah, yeah I never I, see nowhere, he's, nowhere uh, down. He's on the, he doesn't uh, exist to us down here. He, here, he's on the uh, like you know, he's, he's contracted with Time Warner. So yeah, Time Warner. And yeah, we see him all the time. Yeah, see Aaron Rodgers here. That discount double check. I see, I see a little bit of Aaron Rodgers. I see a little bit of him. But, but like I, I see said, a little bit got, of uh, uh, what you call it, uh, Megatron. But see, yeah, we, we get got, a lot of local stars too because you have to remember Megatron is from Atlanta. Right. Cam is from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? So they market us to the, to the homegrown stuff too. Well, we get a, get a lot of that as well. And up here, we have a lot of we have a lot of older legends that have gone through. Like, like for instance, my 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 baby cousin is Amon Green. We he, we still see his face on stuff with Green Bay. Although when he retired, he was with the Texans. So he went back. He's doing a ton of stuff in the Green Bay area. You know, we got your Gail Sayers who still. Still is seen as a Chicago icon, Omaha Central High School. You know. Um, hey, not to cut, not to cut you off, Steve, but Jesse got that Patriots hat on over there. He ain't seeing no Tom Brady on TV out there. <laughs> he got that. He got that package. He got He's that going the bar. He's seeing, he seeing Richard Sherman. Yo, yo, sure. Yeah, I don't take my kindness for a he weakness, homie. Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the package. Believe me, there's mad transplants out here. We get down when the Patriots play. Trust yeah. me. That Richard Sherman on TV. Oh, look, they all meet up at the, they all meet up at the same bar. They you have the package. You see more, uh, you see more of uh, you see uh, Russell. They're really, really, really pushing Russell out here. You see Sherman. Oh, yeah. you, you know what? That, it's funny that you say that because I do see him a lot more uh, on some of the national ads too. You know, we you know we all have different talents on here, and I don't you know. You all know how I feel about performance and athletics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm really not paying attention to the to NFL right now because there's there's just it's just kind of boring. 
Um, the future of the NFL is Andrew Luck, the Eagles, yeah. and yeah. and uh, and Russell. Mm. Those are the only yeah. three interesting things about the NFL right now. Russell, the Eagles, and um, what did I say before? Luck. And Luck. Luck. That's it. And to, a, and to a smaller extent, Kaepernick, because I, I don't think he – I think he's overrated, but they still love him. Nah, he had a rape charge. Kaepernick has been. Uh, I think, he, I think he, he had a rape charge. He ain't going to go too far. Kaepernick's <laughs> the next <laughs> Buffalo Bills. He's not going to get a ring. Mm. He's going to go back to back to back and not get a ring because he doesn't know how to play. Buffalo it. Bills, man. Wow. Damn. Damn, that's, that's harsh. The, the, that's two and o, the two and O Buffalo Bills. That's harsh giving him the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills win four straight and still couldn't win the championship. Yo, Mark, my words, I'm saying it now. Cal and Kaepernick will not win a ring. Wow. Cal and Kaepernick will not win a ring in San Francisco. Had they, got, had they gotten past Seattle? Really had Francisco. they gotten past Seattle last year? They would. You got to take that with a grain of salt. He got a Patriot hat on. They would have beat them. Right. <laughs> Now I'm I'm curious, uh, just thinking about Jesse and everything I've watched in the last. I, I didn't really get a chance to look at nothing today, but everything I saw yesterday. What do you think about the LeBron and everything that comes with it? Have y'all talked about that tonight? It's do do do. It's do do do. <laughs> you really want to ask me that question, knowing where I live and the shit I gotta do? I mean, I, I I just I'm curious on your thoughts. That's all. You know, I watched I watched some of it. And I actually talked to my girl about it, too, which is kind of funny because sometimes she's not really interested in the whole sneaker stuff. But I was watching the pictures, and I saw it come out, and I was like, okay, is there a chance that it's going to be different? Because the shoe was leaked. We knew what was coming. So I'm yeah. like, what the hell are they going to do? What what mm -hmm. are they going to do to possibly make this any kind of a release? Right. And while I watched what was going on, they, they brought in a bunch of bloggers. They brought in a lot of hype, and they brought mm -hmm. LeBron in. And they put them all in Tiger Woods Center, and they streamed it online. But other than that, they didn't do anything new. Zoom ain't new. The technology is not new. They reintroduced mm -hmm. it to a new generation. Cool. Have fun. Enjoy it. Other than that, well, the the, 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 the reason why I asked the I reason why I asked because I I figured you were gonna say that. But if if you look, I didn't get a chance to look at the live stream, but I did see some of the some of the stuff that was, that was put out there. Stream. And I was I was I was curious about some of the stories that they tried to tell with some of the different colorways. And you know they had a, they had a video. Hold on, they had a they had a video. They tried to talk about some of them, and the video was very was done very well. I might add. Um, you're right. They are rehashing some of this stuff. It's funny because the technology actually reminds me of the uh, Jordan 22. Yes, the IPS, the IPS system from the twenty, the twenty one, the twenty two, and the twenty three. That's what it reminds me of. It's just, it's just a lot more detail now. That's all. Yeah, who made the twenty one and twenty two? Uh, Dwayne. Was yes, all Dwayne you made it. Take it out, or is just the twenty two you can take out and switch it? No, the twenty two you can take out. Um, I think the twenty one you can take out. The back of it. Out, had you the take out the back of the twenty one. The, the twenty had the pods, but you couldn't change them. You couldn't change them, and you couldn't change the one in twenty three either. But they had the pods. All of them had the IPS yeah, the 20, system. The twenty had the to IPS. a different extent. They were all a little different. Yep. But that's 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 what this reminds me of. Um, I I think it's done tastefully. I I like some of the colorways. Um, I was I I, I like some of the some of the stories that they try to tell. They try to tell. They didn't really go in depth. They try to give like little tidbits of the stories. They trying. I appreciate the trying, but it's still not good enough. Not good enough, just, right? It's the whole. It's not good enough. One and the whole presentation of it, you know. Um, I could have did without all that blogging and all that bullshit. I could have did without all that. Who was the person on stage that was talking to LeBron? Like what? Like where is the basketball relevance? That's what I was looking for, and I didn't see any of that. I saw a bunch of hype, and I was like. What about the basketball? Well, you know what's funny is that it's funny that you say that because that's the reason why I kind of like the, the the stories that they told with the uh, I think one of them is called Instinct. Um, it's the purple one and it, it has a hummingbird on it and it talks about how you know how he actually moves around on the court and how he's you know he he has the instincts and he uses instincts. I kind of like that. I like that aspect because it's getting back to the core. He has a, a, a colorway. He has a colorway that's coming out called the, uh, the, the 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 heart of a lion or something like that. It's Stuff like that. I like that. I like that. That, 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 that was that's what got my attention. No, there you go. no, there you you're supposed to, no. Check out those pods. Let's let me. You're supposed to be the leader in the market. Right you're supposed to be, you're your supposed shoes to be, are those from Tariq. Those are from the 
George. You're supposed to be innovation. You're supposed to be the leaders in the market. Yeah. You're supposed to be setting the pace. Don't tell right. old stories. Don't lean on a Jordan brand because Michael Jordan was a black cat. Now all of a sudden LeBron has instincts and we make it black. No, I'm not buying it. There's too much talent. There's too much creativity. There's too much sport. There's too much authentic shit out there to be making up shit or leaning on stuff that you did before. So I'm not giving him a pass. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to give them a pass, but I do like, like I said, I like some of what they did. They just didn't do it enough. Hey, they, didn't do, they, they, didn't go for, they didn't go far enough with it. Oh, I think if they would have if, if they would have stopped and, and, and used some of the stuff that they tried to do with some of the colorways and trying to explain them, if they would have went more in depth, I would have. That's what I would have enjoyed more than the big the big hoop they do at the at the building, the, the Tiger Woods building. I, I could have did without all that. All right. Hey, I just broke right. it. There. Well, I, I'm not giving it a pass because it's 225 to 250 dollars. Crazy. No, it's only 200. Oh, and it's only that 200. Every, it's only 200. That's the that's, most. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 no, I'm I'm being facetious when I say that. It's only 200. <laughs> No, but that's, but that's Another reason I was offended is because the next day they had all those bloggers on the court. Yeah, they that's the bullshit I can't How is this different than what they what they're pushing? Um, it isn't. Because look, I just broke it by accident. I didn't try to, but it's two of them in here. That's the same thing. That's and so I just pulled this one out, and like how, like how many fibers? Like they said, some odd thousands of fibers. Like how yeah. many some a thousand odd fibers are in here? Like, like come on, man. Hmm. I mean, look, look, look at the big picture of this. So Adidas is down the road, and they have uh, Boost, right? The same shit. So you have to come up with something and say that that you got some technology in your Zoom, and so all of a sudden the pods that are in LeBron Zoom. Each pod is supposed to be a different number or caliber or strength of Zoom. Right. So now Zoom's not just one pod you put in the shoe. There's different levels and different velocities. Oh, so you're going to be yeah. able to take those out too? No. You can't no. take them out. They, basically, they're trying to push it as enhanced Zoom. That's what they're trying to push it as. Mm -hmm. oh. Or is it... <laughs> It's too. Yeah, you know, and okay, and so I, I hate the bad. I hate the bad them all wait. day. But but at the same time, that's it is. We just speaking the real. But wait, do I like the colorways? I like I like this shoe, and I like the colorways a lot better than the eleven. The eleven to me was shit. I, I I didn't like the eleven at all, and this is way better to me than the eleven. So to me, you get more shoe with the eleven. It's a good question. The question for the, the yep. question for our panel one would be one: Is it going to transfer? From a sport two to a style shoe, is it that no, good no. looking? And then no. two, the other question is: the only thing that will validate the shoe is if he plays in it the whole season. That's what I can't wait to see. Are and they going to let him note, play in it? Gentlemen, on that note, we're going to save this conversation. We're going to continue this conversation. We want to hear because, more about this conversation. Yeah, we want to hear some more. So, doctors and disorderlies yeah, on our man. Facebook group on OSD. We definitely have to go in. And I want some videos from y'all. I'm putting That's it out right. there right now. We're still doing the campaign, y'all. Yes, we we ain't got all our videos hey, yet. I've been, I've been, I was a little busy. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, sorry. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm waiting for Tariq right. to do mine. I'm waiting for yeah, Tariq okay. to do mine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> There's still a few offenders who haven't done a video, myself included. Yeah. Yep. I got mine still in the can, so I got to edit it. So... We're going to get to it. It's going to be, you know, we got to continue these conversations, particularly, you know, our viewers, our watchers, our listeners, the soul doctors and disorderlies. Let them know what we think. More importantly, walk with us, talk with us, you know, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all those good places. But more importantly, this has been episode 320. Thanks to our guest, Max, for joining us on the show tonight. Thank you for coming on and talking about Etonic, the brand where they're going, what they're looking to do, and more importantly, carve out a niche and then some for the brand. Man, I think we gave him a couple of gems that he could definitely take back to the board and have their meeting tomorrow, and then when they do their recap, he could say, ah, we discussed some of these things on OSD last night, episode 320. So make sure you tell your folks to walk with us, talk with us, and more importantly, you have a common concern or a tidbit Hit us with an email at info at osdlive.com. Until next week, man. Soul Doctors, let's go down the line. Let's see. Let's say 
go straight to Houston. Mr. Kodoma, what do you got to say? Man, I'm Uh-oh. looking forward to recapping with everybody next week and talk about what a great time we had in New York with everybody that falls through. So, Absolutely. Mr. Jesse PDX? Great show once again. Thank you to the crew and everybody that's watching. And uh, make sure you connect with us and ask us questions and bring us topics for the next show. And uh, go Patriots. <laughs> Mr. Anita Mr. Heath, ATL, Mr. Team Speak for himself. Man, everybody be good. Uh, shout out to the crew. Sorry for the late pass. Um, okay. You know, and we got, oh, this weekend is uh, Soul Con and. What is it? Soul Con and Sneaker Con. I don't know. It's two different cons this weekend in Atlanta. So we know. <laughs> two different cons. It's, it's a sneaker event every damn weekend now. Straight robbery. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> Soul, yeah, it's Soul Con and Sneaker Con. That's what there it is. There you go. All right. Mr. Ridiculous Creative. Uh, sorry, I cannot be with everybody in New York this weekend. I was really looking forward to it. Have a good time. Man, Perk, the crew. Perk that talk up over there, um, man. Smile, brother. Nah, bro. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Y'all, y'all be good, okay. man. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Mr. T-Squad, what's up? Yeah, all right. So I got to shout all y'all out for one. You know, even though Jesse be over there pooping about his uh, Patriots. What's the other crap we pooping about? Boston? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I still, I still love you, sneaker wise, bro. Uh, <laughs> All right. So look, one, I want to shout out strictlyfitness.com. You know what I'm saying? My brother and I over there getting it busy. Two, I'll be out in Atlanta, sneaker con, shooting Ace of Customs. Whoever out there, come holla at me. Come rock with your boy. Then Sunday, I come down, come rock with your boy, Kadoma. You know, we gonna get it in real quick, and then I'm out. And that's uh, it. And then shout out to stash.com. Go over there, see some good content. It's dope over there. We want it over there. Come holler at us. Set that OSD interview up, bro. Absolutely. And Mr. Hey. Paper Chaser himself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm down with that. We need to thank everybody for watching Disorderlies Around the World. Thank you to the illustrious Soul Doctors. Again, it was one for the books. Next week, we count backwards with episode 321. Oh, man. Woo. We will have a recap of the Snicker Summit that is coming to Brooklyn. I'm so happy it's coming to Brooklyn. So happy, Kadoma. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we have a recap of that, and we also have to make sure that you guys go over to bostonsneakerjam.com and keep getting your updates and info and sign up for your alerts and everything on the Boston Sneaker Jam that's taking place in Boston on October 18th to 19th. Um, again, shout out to the illustrious graphic stylings of one Mr. Steve G, a.k.a. Ridiculous. You had a nice big look for NPR with the um, stories of Biggie this past Sunday with the microphone check logo. I um, appreciate it. And for everyone out there, you know where to find us through all our social media outlets. You got something you want to say to us. There's more than hey, one different way I to want say to it. Say one more thing. There you go, getting your Kanye on. You ain't doing it. Anything. No. <laughs> we are hey, I just got to say, he, he is officially an OG, triple OG out here because he has – the, the Bluetooth walkie talkie thing around here. Like, <laughs> if you got one of those, or, or you walk around with a velour sweatsuit on and a, and a, and a Bluetooth, you holy shit out here, man. Oh, <laughs> God. Can we kill it now? <laughs> right. And on that note, <laughs> y'all, this piece. y'all be good, y'all be safe. <laughs> Come rock with us next week, episode 321. <laughs> You come loose, you walk good, y'all. Good.